Hey everyone, Sean here, and man, we're finally hitting balls. I'm ready to play some golf. The ribs are almost fully healed, but I'm, I'm, I'm starting to get some compression back in the ball. I'm really looking forward to next week and get this body exercising again. In the meantime, one of the things that I've seen a lot again rear its ugly head is swaying. And why would somebody sway? And it really isn't what you think. It's way more insidious than that. So we look at how the eyes work in the human machine. If I face you and I make a golf swing, you'll notice that my golf swing is basically going 90 degrees to the left of you, right? Now I want to go towards you. So from this position here, if I'm going to actually go towards the target where you are, and that's my goal, and I'm being two dimensional about it, then I'm going to want to face you like this. And when I do, it's over. I'm yanking that to the left. So after you're done yanking to the left all day, you're going to say, well, I got to do something. It must be my club face. Then you open the face. It's over after that. You just opened up the biggest can of worms ever imagined for golf. So here's how this works. You absolutely have to have an intermediate point. So let's say I'm going to take another ball out of here. I'm going to put this in front of this one and I'm going to swing in your direction. So this is lining up nicely. And when I swing over this ball, you're going to notice a nice blur. You see the direction that the blur is going on? I feel like my blur, which is the path of my swing, is moving through that ball and towards the other ball. You can see that that's coming towards you. But in my mind, when I do that, I feel like I'm facing about 30 degrees to the right. Now, when you got trees on the right hand side, and you don't see this, you don't know what this is about. You, have, you don't even have a reference as to where your club is passing. You're gonna feel immediately that you're going toward those trees. And when you do, you're gonna say, I don't wanna go there. And then you bail out and you go left. That's typically what happens to the vast majority of us. Okay, I'm just gonna put that back so it doesn't confuse my machine. So. I'm going to use a nice little intermediate point in front of my ball. Grab some straw, grab a broken tee. I'm going to start at a little right edge of that and draw it back to right behind that intermediate point. So now notice that my ball for a draw is just a hair back of center. The front of my ball is touching center so that when the arc of my swing moves through, I'm catching the ball slightly naturally from the inside. How does that work? Well, if I were to take my arm and just cut grass with my arm, you'll notice the center of that machine is my right shoulder. And you notice it keeps cutting the grass right underneath my shoulder. So now I bring both hands together to take my grip. The center of my machine is right here between my two clavicles, the sternal notch. And I'll play the ball in the middle here. And that basically could be a little draw or it could be a little fade, depending on how much my, my center oscillates. But if I want draw, I'm going to play the ball a hair back of that. I'm going to get behind it. Now it feels like the blur is going to go slightly right of that intermediate point. And in your mind's eye on the range, it's going to feel 30 yards to the right. What you're going to do is you're going to let it go there. Okay, here we go. So, yes, I'm moving to the right. Yes, I'm moving to the right. The ball starts that way and draws back. Right side of the green right there. So, we'll take another one here. There's my intermediate point. Ball back of center, get behind the ball. I'm gonna stay in that direction. So I see the blur in my mind. 
I'm moving in that direction, and I just swung in that direction. And that should be pretty good. That's 12 feet left of the flag. So, yeah, it was a little bit left, but it was center of the green, and I ended up uh, 15 feet to the left of my target. All right, so we'll do one more. Yes, it feels like I'm going right edge. Yes, I'm staying right edge. How do I know that? Well, if I come back over here and you can see these two units right now, that feels like I'm going way left. That feels like I'm going way right. And this feels like I'm going right edge, right edge, right edge, right edge, right edge. See how I do that now? So this gives me the exact pinpoint reference. Everything's right here in front of me with my binocular vision. I don't have to turn that way to find my target. Everything's right there in front of me. So yes, I'm moving that way. Still moving that way. Oh yeah, that was flush in that direction. How about that? All right, we'll take that. So that was nice and flush, 170 carry, 1000 RPM to the left, and I ended up 15 feet to the right of my flag. So what would cause you to sway now, right? Well, when you're thinking, hey, this feels like I'm going way right. I'm going to sway off that thing so I feel like I can present myself to the target. And that's what you're doing. So you're going to sway off that ball to find the target better, but the target's not where you think it is. You can't face the target and take a swing at the same time. It doesn't work. So you have to rely on this. That's A. B, you have to feel like the low point is right here in front of the ball. So if I swing back and through without stopping, watch where the sole of the club actually catches the turf in each direction. Send the grass. Send the grass. Send the grass. Send the grass. So notice on the way through, the cut's over here, and on the way back, it's over here. Never at the ball. The ball gets collected first, then the grass gets cut in front of the ball, just like what you see here on video. So I am keenly aware that my low point is right there in front of the ball. Nope, no longer there. Nah, can't go there anymore. So I can't stay to the right of the intermediate point from here. Yes, I can. No, I can't. So that's going to force me to the left of the intermediate point, And I'm going to have a tendency to hit the ground before the ball. Whereas here, I got the ground after the ball. I got the ground after the ball. I got the ground after the ball. How do I stay behind it? Well, I'm going that way right there to the right edge of that. Whoops. I can no longer go to the right edge of that. Yep. I can go right edge. So staying right edge, staying right edge, release right edge. will give myself a little bit more momentum. That doesn't count. I was uh, flinching from the ribs on that one. So I got to go a little bit more smooth. So I see where I'm going. Yes, it's going that way. Yes, it's going that way. That was gorgeous. And we are, we are in the, in the shadow of flag territory, three feet from the flag stick. So that's going to, uh, that's going to do extremely well for us. Okay. So there's, um, uh, the blueprint of how we stop swaying. Everything's in front of you. Everything's moving in the direction that you want the ball to start on. Now, if you find that you're starting the ball in that direction and the ball ends up going to the right all the time, 
It just means that your grip club relationship is not strong enough. By the way, very sticky, muggy day here in Quebec City. It's just like Florida weather. And you notice how my white hat, no sweat lines. I've been hitting balls here for a while doing some videos. So the, the secret is the no sweat band that you see in here. It just sticks right there at the front and it's, re it's reusable multiple times. It doesn't stink like a football locker room and uh, it keeps the front of your hat nice and clean at all times. And it makes it so comfortable on the forehead that you know, you'll enjoy wearing it in hot, muggy weather. So, so just close the face. Yeah, I let go of the club, I close the face. So do a little Goldilocks. You say, okay, I'm gonna stay to the right of that intermediate point. Yes, I'm going to the right. Yes, I'm going to the right. Now watch the curve on this thing. So now I'm missing way left of the green only because it curved too much. So if we look at where that started, it started seven degrees to the right. So I stayed to the right, but because I had 3,400 spin to the left, well, that ended up 85 feet left of the flag. So I know that that club face there would be too closed and I'm not releasing at the ball. I'm releasing through the ball and to the right of my intermediate point. If the face was too open, yes, I'm going that way. Yes, I'm going that way. Yes, I stayed that way. Watch what happens now. That ball is way out to the right and much, much weaker. So if you feel that your, your distance is significantly lacking, that's an open face. Why did you open your face in the first place? Well, you opened your face in the first place because you're going too far to the left and you felt the need to open the face. Now I've got you know, 180 side spin to the right, but my path was way out to the right as well. Okay. And that ended up 113 feet to the right. So you swing to the right of the intermediate point, and then you adjust the club face until that ball comes back with a nice draw. If you want some more help on that, see hit a honking draw to hit straight Sean Clement on YouTube. That'll help you out. And then the other one is stop pulling to the left, Sean Clement. That'll really help understand what just transpired here for this stop swaying episode, okay? All the best. See you next week.